What's going on people? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Now we're nearly finished with the first week of lockdown and it's felt like a month to be honest. And I know your week has probably been as boring as mine but I'm here to try and hopefully pass the next 10 minutes of your time. It's part 2 of the Chelsea tier list rankings for the 2019-2020 season. Now I already went through half the squad in my previous video so if you haven't seen that don't forget to check out that video as well. And there were a couple players you agreed with, there was a couple players you disagreed with as well and it's going to be the same way for this video as well. Like I said before if there's any you disagree with let me me know down in the comment section below and let's have a chat. Andreas Christensen, good. Now Christensen has improved a lot from the start of the season to now. First couple games of the season he looked poor, he looked out of it and he lost his place in the starting 11 to Fikayo Tomori and he's also had his physicality questions on numerous occasions with him struggling to deal with certain strikers. I'm going to use Everton away as an example, a game where he was very poor and looked very weak on and off the ball. But he has improved dramatically since the turn of the year. He's, he's been given his spot in the starting 11 back. Him and Rudiger are now the preferred back two in defence. And he started to look a lot more like the player we saw under Conte, who looked like one of the best players and the best defenders in the league until that Barcelona game. That mask has also done wonders, as that mask always does to anyone who's wearing Chelsea blue. But Christensen has developed well throughout the season, so I'm going to put him in the good rating. Fakaya Tomori, good. Now, for a player who was Derby player of the season, he didn't come into the team with as much hype as Mason Mount or Tammy Abraham did, but at the start of the season, his performance was matching the pair of them, if not even exceeding it. He started the season on fire for us, he showed excellent ability and composure on the ball, and he had the strength to match it as well, and could even contribute to the team going forward, like Wolves away, which I'm not even just talking about that banging 40 yarder that just came out of nowhere and shocked the entire away end. I'm also talking about that drive forward that contributed a second goal in Tammy's first of his hat-trick on that day and it's a shame that since then it's, he's just dropped off a little bit Lampard seems to have cooled off on him a little bit he doesn't seem to prefer him to Christensen and Rudiger and even when he came back into the team against Bournemouth he looked shaky as well it didn't look like the same Tomori we'd seen for a lot of games throughout the start of this season he looked uncomfortable he looked shaky he was eventually subbed off in the second half and I think because of that and also because of him being dropped from the side, I have to put him in the good rating. But looking at how he was performing at the start of the season, I thought he would be a lot higher than that. And that's nothing to, that's nothing to slag off Tomori with because like him and like a bunch of other players, I think he's still got a very high ceiling and he can develop very well. But this season, he's just seemed to cool off a little bit. So we're just going to put him in the good rating for now. Mason Mount, good. Now, it's been a solid first breakout season for Mason Mount. He's relied on by Lampard to start the tempo of Chelsea's pressing game. And he's a very energetic player who loves to chase the ball. And his off-the-ball movement is about as crucial to his game as his on-the-ball movement. And he started the season on fire for Chelsea. He got a first Premier League goal of the season. And he popped up with a couple since then. And so far, he has six league goals for the season, which is all right for the player's first season. However, though, he has lacked consistency, which I do understand. That's why he has got some stick from Chelsea fans as well. Percy, which I think is undeserved because it's his first season as a Chelsea first team. I don't think he's done that bad, especially seeing the situation surrounding the club at the time. I also think he lacks stamina and I think he struggles to see a full 90 out. Nothing to slay him off with. Again, all of these criticisms are just stuff that will probably improve with time with these players. It is their first season. A lot of them have been thrown in the deep end and asked to swim. I think Mason Mount has handled himself pretty well. He started to come back into his own. We're going to look back at the Everton game. He had an amazing performance. Would have been man of the match if it wasn't for Billy Gilmore being around on the pitch at the time and just doing his thing, which we're going to go on to in a little bit as well. But he has started to find his feet a little bit again. I'm only going to put him in good. If he shows that consistency or if that stamina can improve, he'll end up being up in the great section. He'll end up being improved in any way. But as of right now, Mason Mount, we're just going to put him in good. Billy Gilmore. Now, I haven't said his rating yet because I'm still trying to figure out for myself. And for Billy Gilmore as well, he's going to be so fuming that the season had to end where it did because everything's just falling into place for him. He's had two man of the matches in two straight games since being pushed into the starting lineup with Jorginho's suspension. And he nearly had Bayern Munich as well, which would have been the perfect game to, set, to show exactly what he's capable of against the best of the best. Now he looks ridiculously composed for a player of his age and a player of his experience at the top level as well. For someone to have composure and a calm head like that, Brother, words can't describe it. I really can't describe it for you. His diagonal passes are amazing. His short passes are killer. And he has the pace to beat players and to intercept passes as well. Pocketed Fabinho in his... 
I think first serious start for us, I'm not going to talk about Grimsby. Grimsby was a great performance for him, but Liverpool and Everton are just on another level and I'd rather focus on those games. Guy has a massive future ahead of him. You know what, I'm just going to put him in great anyway just because he's only played three games for us. He's one man of the match in those two games. I don't make the rules. The guys had two man of the matches in two games. I'm putting him in great anyway. Argue with you now. Willian, average. Now, it does look like it's going to be his final season for Willian at Chelsea. And there was a lot of expectation on his shoulders this season after Eden Hazard's departure and Willian just snatching his number before he could even walk out the door. And he had a poor first game back against Leicester and I remember a lot of fans were fuming at Willian's performance that game. But ever since then, his performances have improved he has been a lot more direct he has finally started racking up a couple of goals and assists to his name he's got five goals and five assists so far got two goals against Tottenham in the derby which is always going to be good no one's going to complain about that now are we and I'd put him a bit higher if he just had a bit more consistency about him but he still has those odd William games every now and again where you're just sitting there wanting to rip your hair out but I will say he's had a much better season than he has had in previous seasons. So I'm just going to put Willian in average. Pedro, average. Now, Pedro's the same thing as well. Pedro is going to be leaving at the end of the season. If anything, this one's actually been announced today that Pedro will be going. And he's only really been relied on this season whenever there's been too much injuries to our wingers. He had a couple bits of game time at the start because of injuries. He's had a couple bits of game time now because of injuries. And other than that, he hasn't really seen a lot of game time. He started the season on the wing before being sidelined with his own injury. Struggled to get back into the team before more injuries opened the door for him. Had a good game against Everton, but other than that, we just haven't seen a lot of him. So I'm just going to put Pedro in average. Kurt Zuma, good. Now, Kurt Zuma had a okay start to the season. I think he's been very inconsistent. I think that's a word I can use to describe a lot of players this season. Uh, since the turn of the year though, he's only played three games this season and he's been benching preference for Christensen and Rudiger with mistakes still showing in his game. Now, I won't say it hasn't all been bad for him. He has had some very solid performances in the team this season. His recovery tackles have been very good and his long passing is an underrated aspect of his game. But there are still mistakes in Zuma's game and I kind of get why he's been dropped a little bit in preference for Christensen and Rudiger. So, Kurt Zuma, we're just going to leave him good. Emerson, average. Now... If we're basing this off the first month of the season, you probably get an excellence. And who scored even rated him the best left back in Europe based on his performances. But an injury just derailed his momentum and he's looked shaky ever since he's got back. He's got zero goals and zero assists to his name. And Percy, I just don't think he's shown enough in the team since then. So Emerson, we're going to leave an average. Tammy Abraham, good. Now, it's been a quietly good season for Tammy Abraham with 13 goals and 4 assists. And for his first season in the top 6 side, it says a lot for him. But the goals have dried up for Tammy Abraham as well. He's only had four goals for us since November. I will say he's been definitely overplayed in various parts of the season. And that's why he's been suffering with injuries so much as well. And it's a key factor for his drop in form and for why he's out now with an injury. But there are also areas for Tammy Abraham to improve on. He does need to be able to get on the end of crosses better. I mean, if you look at Bayern Munich at home, if you look at Leicester away, for an example. Leicester away, Leicester, Reese James could have had two or three assists to his name if Tammy was on the end of some crosses. Bayern Munich, I think his anticipation just needed to be a lot better. And there was a couple good chances that he really should have put into the back of the net. He also does struggle to drive with the ball and he struggles with it with the ball at his feet at times. It's nothing to knock his hold-up play or his link-up play. Percy, I think both of those have improved this season. He's got four assists to his name already so far up front. And when it comes to his hold-up play, start of the season, he used to barely win any of them. And now he's challenging a lot more in terms of 50-50s and hold-up play and one-on-ones. But... You still see where his deficiencies are. His dribbling, getting the ball out of his feet, he does struggle with that at times. But you will see improvements. You're definitely going to see improvements with Tammy Abraham. It's nothing to knock the kid. The guy is growing, the guy is developing, and the guy has been thrown at the deep end in a top six side and asked to run as one of our best strikers alongside players like Obama Yang and Harry Kane as he's been asked to keep up with them. And to be fair, he's kept a decent name for himself. So I'm going to put Tammy Ab Abraham in, in good. I think he'd be a bit higher, but he's been overplayed a lot this season and it's impacted to this performance so I'm only going to put Tammy Abraham in good. Marcus Alonso good. Now we've seen the best and worst of Marcus Alonso this season at the start of the season we were struggling to see where he fits into the squad. Emerson was shining on all cylinders and after Alonso's performances last season I left that no one wanted to see him in that position but he slowly looked like he's starting to come back into his own. He started to look like the Alonso from old when we started playing up with a back five 
And ever since we start playing with a back five, Alonso starts to look like he has a bit more of a purpose in the side. At left wing back, there hasn't been a lot of question marks over Alonso's performances. He's been a great player at left wing back. It's only at left back where he starts to look a bit more exposed, where he has to start to focus more defensively. And he was covered pretty well in the first couple months by Fakayo Tomori, who has the pace to cover both of them and to handle that left side as well as his own. But even then, there's still been poor performances from him at times. Four goals and two assists in the league though from left back or left wing, it, says, it only says volumes about what he can do going forward. He even looks solid at left back against Liverpool. Now there might still be a role for Alonso at Chelsea now that Lampard seems to favour a back five a little bit more, but at left back there might still be question marks about who starts there. All we do know is that there is still a role for Marcus Alonso now that we play with a left wing back, so for Marcus Alonso I'm going to give him a good rating. But guys, this is the end of the video. Let me know whether you guys agree or disagree with my ratings. I know there's going to be players that you disagree with. Just let me know down in the comment section. We can have a discussion about it. It'll be bants. Fuck it. Let's do it. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. There's not really much else I'm doing. So check out this channel. This is where all my content is going to be. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Blues Fans TV as well. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Up the shells. Well guys, this is the end of the Chelsea tier list rankings video. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with any of the ratings that I've put any of these Chelsea players in. Now I know you guys are going to disagree with a couple of them, so leave it down in the comment section below and we can have a discussion about it because it's not like I'm going anywhere. So guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Blues Fans TV as well. Take care, wash your hands and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Up the Chelsea.